All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, it is a cold day in Oregon. So uh, today I kind of just got in uh, from taking a morning walk and also de-icing uh, Jess's car, but I uh, decided I would just do a live video. I was feeling in the mood. Why not? Feel feeling talkative this morning. So today we're going to be talking about, I just finished this book, uh, Breath by James Nestor. Really great book. Amazing book. Uh, this, I mean, I know I say that about all my books, but uh, I was reading this um, over the last week. I was down in San Diego uh, for the, you know, different things. I was meeting for both the tech sales companies um, that I'm consulting with, as well as for photo booth companies. We went to an expo. Uh, we did an event in um, for a sales conference, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Got to meet some very interesting people. Had some great dinners. Also was able to find time to play a little bit of pickleball pickleball with some old friends. But today is going to be about the book review of Breath. And uh, this is kind of something that I did not realize was so important. And I wish, I'd, I wish I'd known this stuff 10, 15, 20 years ago. It would have been a big game changer. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. It's a very interesting story. James Nestor, the author um, you know, funny enough, I, I was meeting with a friend who's kind of a, a motivational speaker in the health area and she knows him and, uh, tell me a little about him and his manner and mannerisms, but <clears throat> he does a very sociological perspective of going in and he did his research. He interviewed all these different people on the power of breathing and different types of breathing techniques, as well as he he basically did it to himself and he tracks his progress over 10 years to see the differences on his health performance. He also looks at history, different accounts. So he takes a very journalistic sociological perspective on the art of breathing. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, you got to watch what you eat. You got to definitely, you know, train aerobic, aerobically and anaerobically. You got to be flexible. There's all these things in meditation, mental health. There's all these little things on health that I'm a fan of and breathing is that lost pillar that, you know, kind of got swept under the rug. So took a few notes. I thought this was really, really cool. Very fascinating book. Highly recommended. It. It's a very easy read too. Um, the, the vocabulary, the flow, he's a really good writer. He, you know, he keeps you very intrigued. He's one of my new favorite writers. Um, loved his style. Anyway, so the average person, uh, you're going to take about 670 breaths over 670 million, excuse me, breaths over your entire lifetime. This is very significant because it's not about the quant uh, the quantity, it's about the quality. And 90% of people breathe incorrectly. And I was one of them. I I still like am tr have trouble. I mouth breathe a lot. I I breathe when you know, I wake up and I'm still breathing through my mouth. Um, I remember the first time I discovered this was back when I was living in Japan and, you know, we were just playing a game with people like how many breaths and this guy was reading a book, how many breaths you're supposed to take the average amount. And he timed me for a minute and I realized I was breathing twice the amount as the average person. I was taking a lot of shallow, fast breaths and I didn't, I wasn't even conscious of it. Didn't even realize of it. So this is a very big thing that everybody should kind of strive toward. You're never going to be perfect, but you should strive for it. So mouth breathing causes the body to lose 40% more water. You become more dehydrated. Okay. If you switch it to nose breathing, no, nose breathing, you have actually you 18% more oxygen if you do nose breathing. And part of the book, he talks about kind of history. And he went to this thing called the Morton Collection. And if you go to the Morton Collection, uh, it was these skulls that had been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And you can see our history of like these time periods, how the skulls were developed. Back in the day, all the skulls had doubled the nasal um, and uh, the nasal capacity and the sinuses, as well as the skulls, the teeth were perfect. Now, that's kind of crazy because, you know, I went through orthodontics. A lot of kids go through orthodontics. A lot of people do nowadays. How is it that 200 years ago, 200 years ago, <clears throat> I'm just waking up by the way. So sorry if I sound a little like a little, you know, that kind of state as I drip coffee all over myself. But so how is it that 200 years ago, these skulls had perfect teeth. They had perfect skull com composition. And nowadays that everybody kind of grows into bad, bad 
you know, kind of teeth needs orthodontics, needs extra, you know, uh, needs to get their wisdom teeth pulled, all these things. And we're breathing worse. It's kind of crazy, right? So back in, in history, you know, we were hunters gatherers. So we did a lot more nose breathing in terms of like capacity. We were like running all the time, right? Nowadays, we live a pretty sedentary lifestyle where we're waiting in the doctor's office. We're doing tech sales stuff and we're sitting all the time. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting at the airport, you're sitting in the car compared to where we were, but we were moving all the time. So you had to breathe a lot better. And it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that way. The other thing is the food over the last 200 years, food process, food processing has been increased. So people, you know, they don't chew as much as they once did. We used to chew hard stuff, hard meat, hard bark, hard nuts, all this stuff. Now it's like, you know, this morning I'm probably going to have a smoothie, maybe some eggs. You know, it's soft food in comparison. You're not engaging your jaw as much as we once did. So in combination of that, you know, poor, you know, we're not needing it as much and we're breathing through our mouths a lot more. All this stuff combined has made us have smaller mouths over time. And the smaller mouth, the teeth can't fit in, the tongue's too big for the mouth. It starts squeezing it, and that's how you get kind of crooked teeth. At least that's kind of how I, I kind of interpreted it. So overall, it's very, very interesting. You know, they talk about in the history, it goes through cases of people that, you know, when uh, Native Americans, there's this one guy who's traveling through Native American, he goes to all the Plains people, you know, 200 years ago or, or less than that, 150 years ago, and they all had perfect teeth. It's kind of crazy. So let's talk about a little bit more. Um, one of the coolest things that, and I've done a book review on this for the Wim Hof method. Uh, I'm big in that, in that community up here in Oregon. And, uh, you know, I went to home in San Diego and everybody I knew in different groups, a friends group, pickleball group. Um, I had some family friends that were also there. They're all into Wim Hof or, or deep breathing and cold exposure. So there's a lot of science behind it. Wim Hof is actually Tumo, which was fire breathing. It's fast breathing, completely inhale, exhale, and then holding it. And even in the book, there's all these like kind of cases of, you know, ancient monks who were able to be in sub-zero temperatures, who were able to defy these things. And if you haven't, if you don't know who Wim Hof is, definitely look it up. Um, he's broken like 20 world records. He's done amazing feats in his lifetime. And he kind of discovered the stuff on his own, just kind of, it, it's a very fascinating story. I recommend the book as well. And he was even at one point shut up at Ebola and nothing happened. His immunity was that high from just breathing. So can everybody do that? I don't know, but can it help you learning this stuff? Totally, 100%. In his last chapter, he talks about prana energy. And if, you're, if you've known this channel, you know I'm into energy as well. Prana energy is life force energy. It's the breath going in. Um, ancient ones, people talked about chi, ki. You guys know that I'm going into, I'm trying out Qigong, which actually means breath work. Very interesting to learn about. So all these things have a synergistic effect on the body. Now I'll just get into like, what should you do? What are the best practices? Some of the things that I'm going to start implementing, there's, there's actually more, there's a few different breathing techniques that I found. Um, all right, I'll give that a shot. I'll give that a try. So some of the breathing techniques, number one, nose breathing, try to try to get in the habit of just nose breathing. And it's easiest to do this when you wake up in the morning and are just a little more conscious of it. Okay. So um, my, my usual ritual is I wake up and I do meditation. Very easy for me to get into like, all right, let me remind myself to nose breathe. But also he talks about, you should be nose breathing throughout the day. Try to do nose breathing during the daytime. Try to do it during the nighttime and try to do it when you work out. Now I know that's easier said than done, but I've gotten pretty good of daytime and working out need to work on the nighttime a little bit more so daytime just you know you can consciously think like let me try to breathe a little bit better um working out you know same thing make sure and then with nighttime i'm using medical tape or just scotch tape and i'm putting it on my mouth to try to force myself to nose breathe and this is successful like half the time sometimes i wake up and it's like mouth is totally open it's like hanging off my lip other times I actually wake up fully and it's it's there and I can tell I've been, and I notice the difference. I wake up with significantly more energy 
when I'm successfully have just done nose breathing. So try that out. I think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so nose breathing. Second thing, make sure you're exhaling and inhaling fully. There's a lot of uh, trapped stale air that can be toxic over the long run in your lungs. A lot of us do shallow breathing, including myself. I, I didn't know I was such a shallow breather until kind of being a little bit more aware of this and doing a kind of a self-assessment. So make sure that you exhale fully and inhale fully and just like kind of like just just kind of force yourself, you know, really try to get it all out and breathe and you can start seeing what is your capacity. Okay. The thing is the, the duration as well. You also want to try to time yourself. And this is good to do. I like to do this before meditation for a minute or two. Look at a timer. Look at my watch and try to breathe out five seconds, ideally 5.5 seconds. Inhale five seconds. Okay. Follow that tempo and consistently tr and try to keep that tempo throughout the day. Um, in his studies with James Nestor, he was basically talking about a lot of prayers, a lot of meditations all around the world. They all seem to to stand on 5.5 seconds, inhale and exhale. So try to do that. So again, nose breathing, inhale, exhale fully, try to keep it 5.5 seconds each time. And then the other things are uh, chewing, funny enough, he talked about chewing, that we're not chewing much enough. And if you chew one to two hours a day, you can actually develop new bone. And a lot of people always said, no, you can't develop new bone. You, your bones are you're done when you're a kid. Actually, they found that you can grow new bone. You can grow new muscles, new bone, um, and new stem cells in your jaw from chewing excessively. Now, I'm going to give this a shot. I'll let you guys know in six months how this turns out. But you want to do hard chewing, hard gum, not like soft chewing. Okay? The other things are some of the other areas that we talked about before. Try out practicing yoga, practicing uh, Sarshan Kriya, practice meditation. Uh, I'm trying out Qigong right now, which is also moving meditation and energy work. Now, and then the last thing is obviously the Wim Hof method. If you haven't tried it yet, definitely try it. It has a lot of, you know, since doing that, I have noticed that the ability for me, my VO2 max has gone up. I noticed that breathing through my nasal cavities is way easier than it once was six months ago. So definitely try that out. Um, now, the added benefit of Wim Hof is basically doing cold exposure and jumping in the cold shower or jumping in the cold river, which is what I do occasionally. Uh, I might be doing that tomorrow morning. But try that out. Um, very good to do. Anyway, I think that's kind of it. So what do we go through? Nose breathing. Inhale, exhale fully. 5.5 seconds each time. Practice other types of breathing techniques from Wim Hof to meditation to yoga. Uh, chew more. Qigong. All these things combined will improve the quality of your life okay it's better to know it, it, I, I always am of the opinion research everything you know look at everything try everything and keep what works for you so this is one thing if you're looking at you know uh, getting healthier getting more efficient improving improving kind of like your ability to uh, be awake <laughs> throughout the day practice these breathing techniques um, I've noticed in my own life, I'm going to practice some of the ones that he recommends just to kind of like see what, what happens, but this was a great book. Definitely recommend it. Breath by James Nestor. Uh, I would give it a shot. All right. So that's it for today. Hope everyone's doing well. Happy. What is it today? Oh, it's a holiday. Um, St. Patty's day. Happy St. Patty's day. <laughs> All right, guys have a happy Friday and happy St. Patrick's day. Okay. Cheers.